Hey everybody, it's Lisa with Harmony House Art. So I thought we'd do something a little different today. Um, I've been playing around with what I kiddingly call the Dutch Bloom technique, which is really um, neither, neither technique, but a little bit of both, the highlights of both maybe. And so I thought I'd go over that today. It's very easy, two important things. The two most important things, small hair dryer, you can, uh, just easier to control, not so forceful. And for the topper or the cell activator, what you want to look at, you can use any paint that's very stretchy. So don't, I'm not even worried about what's happening in the cup. What I'm looking at is how the paint bounces back to the stick. That's got some serious bounce back, so that's a really good paint for the top. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so that's Amsterdam uh, Oxide Black, and I'm going to use Pearl Base. For what I'm doing, the important thing is the, the topper, the cell activator, they call it. Um, I don't, these other paints are, are just mixed with Floetrol, and my cell activator is also mixed with only Floetrol. And that's how it comes to be so responsive. It's, a, it's just a really good paint anyway. And see that spring, the way it springs back up to the, try to get, where's the camera? Anyway, okay. We'll get going with this. I'm gonna start with, uh, Love struck. Okay. There we go. And spiced pumpkin. going to do a little gold on here. I use gold instead of yellow a lot of times. Oh god, here we go. And finally the topper. Okay, the whole objective now is to try to bring the black, spread it across the other colors. It's very stretchy. It's going to stretch back after we get through blowing it, and that's where your cells come in. So that's what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some bubble popping first. Okay. I've got this uh, travel size hair dryer on low. I'm just going to try to grab some of that black, spread it out.
And while I'm thinking about it, here's why that doesn't work with an airbrush. We'll just, we'll just try this real quick. This is what happens. This is too focused for this kind of blowing. You get more of this, which is not really what you're wanting. Same thing with your mouth or like a straw. Um, I pass out before I get this much blown and you need a wider swath on a bigger surface, so. Okay, so now we know how stretchy the black is. Just keep your eye on the center here. It'll take a few minutes and I'll just, I'll speed it up. I kind of like on, on if a, a smaller canvas like this one, I kind of like to do the edges myself. I like the more organic look than this uniform thing. So on that one, I would just take the, the straw and try to add a little more base so it gives me something to blow over. Look at this in the meantime, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, there you go. So let's go in for a close-up. Okay, here we go. It's gorgeous. You see how that black stretched over the colors and then snapped back? And that snapping back process is what creates all those gorgeous cells and lacing or whatever you want to call that in the middle. And you can do the edges however you want. You're not going to get any cells out there. You just get some, you can kind of fluff it up um, with air. But the two, you know, like I said, the two most important things I think for this, uh, for success with this technique is uh, the smaller hair dryer where you've got control and you can blow low on low speed and blow the black out over the colors. And it's really important to have a good stretchy paint. Doesn't matter what color, as long as the brand, it doesn't matter what color or brand, as long as you get that bounce back up to your stick when you drip it off.
I hope this helps. Uh, I had so many questions, I thought I better address it. And uh, so sharing what I've learned, just sharing what I've learned from doing it. All right, take care and thanks so much for being here. Bye.